Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome or welcome back to a substance painted tutorial where we are texturing Cora. In the previous tutorial, we brought Cora in from Maya and laid out the foundations of her textures. In this video tutorial, we're going to start hammering down the small details that makes Cora a very cool character. If you're new to this channel, I post videos on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and so much more. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out that creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and continue texturing Korra from The Legend of Korra. All right, we have some really great information here, some great details, great fundamental textures. Let's go ahead and start adding even more information about our character. Let me show you the character sheet. I'm missing the white areas. I'm missing this details, the boots and a bunch of other details. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to look for a smart material that's going to be leather. And I want something to be like a very smooth leather. Well, she's totally changed into a ninja. And in the leather, I'm going to go down to the base and see if I can find the base color. There it is. I'm going to scroll down until I find the base color and I'm going to change this to white. I could take a look at the textures and see what type of information these little wrinkles provide for me. And if I want to keep them or not, I might actually get rid of the creases going vertically because it looks like noise. There's a little bit of sharp in there, which is fine. And I think that's a good place to start. So I'm going to go in and create a black mask, of course. And then I'm actually probably going to use this section here. So I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to grab a hard brush. I'm going to choose my left brackets to reduce the size and then basically paint it back in. Now you'll notice that it looks like it's digging in. Oh, and it's going into her skin, which obviously I don't want that. Even if I paint this area, I can always remove it with the tool for the UV shells and just remove it. So that's going to be an easy fix. The reason why it's pixelated is because I'm zooming in. The texture is only 2K. If I really wanted to get really clear lines, I would have to do like a 4K map, which I'm not interested in. general, I doubt we're going to get really close where we see the pixelation. So going back to uh, the top and grab the mask. I'm going to grab my paintbrush and again, start painting. Now I could make my life a little easier and grab this and also grab faces. And I could actually go in, oop, let me hit X. And since there's already a path for the uh, faces, I could just choose the, those. Of course, I'm gonna paint some, but that can give me uh, like a good start. So let me go in. I should have turned on symmetry, but that's okay. Let me go ahead and take these, these, and then I gotta figure out how far in do I want the collar. So I've got one pretty deep here and one a little thinner. Um, according to the reference, it's actually pretty thin. So I'm going to go back to hit X and remove these. This is so fun. I just can't believe how easy that make it. It's so easy. I'm going to go back to painting. Let me turn on symmetry. Make sure I paint this in. Hit X and paint this out. Paint this in again. And you can get a straight line if you hold down shift, so click shift and hold, click shift and hold, and that's gonna get you a nice straight line. There you go. I'm gonna hit X and actually make this a little smaller and also this a little smaller. All right, the back. I'll fix that in a second, but let's find the back. Same story with this one. I am going to grab the polygon fill and I'm just gonna Go ahead and deselect these, hit X to get the opposite color and bring this in. Looks like it's not enough, so I probably need this one. So, okay, I'll just do it this way. Do some painting, whoops. Fix this here. Remove some of it. And there's this really interesting transition. So I'm just going to paint it in. Let's remove it from the neck. So I'm going to grab the fill polygon and grab the shell and click X. And there you go. We now have this area here. Cool. Moving on to the side of the arm. Same story here. I'm going to grab some faces. And I'm going to be looking at the model. 
I've got symmetry on, so the same thing should happen to the opposite side and go ahead and make your selection. All right, so now we've got that. I'm not a big fan of the cubic look, so I am going to grab the paintbrush and basically paint some of that away. It's looking a little pixelated, so I'm just gonna, oops, kind of trace it a little bit. I have a tablet, so it's a little easier than a mouse. My tablet's also really small. If you are interested in the tablet, I actually use the Wacom Intuos small graphics drawing tablet, which you can see here on the screen. And I've had mine for years and it's actually on sale right now. It looks like for like 43%. So I would take advantage of that. I'll leave a link below in the description. And just to let you know, it is going to be an affiliated link. So it, there's no extra cost to you. It, I just get a little kickback. Now this is my home setup. If you want to go more advanced, I recommend that the actual Wacom Cintiq. Uh, this guy is amazing. I have it at work and I draw on it and I sculpt on it and I use substance painter on it and I, it's great. So I highly encourage you guys, if you could afford it to get yourself a Cintiq, if you just need a pen to give you pressure sensitivity, then I definitely encourage you guys to take a look at the, the small graphic drawing tablets. They work. I've used it forever. It's replaced my mouse. So check it out. So anyway, I'll leave the two links below if you're interested. Again, it's an affiliated link and I do get a kickback, but no cost to you. Same for the top. I think it's a little too much, so I'm going to remove some. Wee. There is a lazy mouse feature, which you can click up here at the top. Let me decrease the distance. So the idea is that I can actually draw it and it will follow a path. So it gives you a cleaner transition. So that might be another option for you to consider is that you can draw this and it will try to make a smoother edge. And I might take advantage of that, even though it's kind of skipping out of it a little bit on me. But let me see if I can get a better result with this one. So we just click and it just looks like it's not doing anything and then it does. Do the same thing on the other side, just kind of click and drag and it kind of brings the mouse here. Just gonna drag it and it tries to do a cleaner path. Like that. Let me see the top, the top's looking okay. There, there we go. There is a little weird wrinkle and I think that's the texture. I think there was a texture here that had like creases or something. That's one part of it. And then there's the other. I just actually just want a nice even uh, texture. And of course, with the skin, I can always grab this one, flip it, up, wrong way, flip it, and select the shell for both of them. And it looks like I missed a face, so I might as well go back to face and just make sure that one gets selected. I just want one pink. There we go. Cool. All right, so that's one part of Cora. She also has these white edges in the accessory. So let me go ahead and I'm going to copy this leather. Copy, go to the accessories, and then paste. I'm going to clear the black mask. And now I just got to figure out where these guys are located. So I'm going to turn off Lazy Mouse. They're pretty small, so right around here. And there they are. So because this is polygons that are modeled, I can easily just grab these, grab the polygon faces and just make my selection. I need to get, get in there, but I should be able to just quickly select some faces. It's gonna look pixelated, but again, this is gonna be pretty far away. And any mistakes that I make, I can always click X and remove them. All right, just in case, I'm gonna take my brush and just kind of paint it a little bit. Remove some of it. And that's one part of it. Let's go ahead and scroll down to this one. Just wanna make sure everything looks good, okay. Uh, and do it again. Gonna go a little faster. Hit X and remove the excess. Moving on. Ooh, this one got, this one's fun. Mm, I see, it's symmetry. Let me turn it off. Okay, that's better. I was like, what is going on? Okay, it was symmetry. <laughs> that made me nervous for a second. 
All right. Make sure your symmetry's off, because yikes. Uh, all right. Let's grab all these faces to make a nice big chunk. And again, if you do too much, you can click X and then remove it. Moving up here, hit X, grab a nice chunk. And then hit X again and remove it. Any excess. Okay, could probably add a little more. Just double check here. You may be wondering why does it look like that? And that's because the texture is, is I mean, I'm zooming in. This is, uh, from afar, it's going to look really good. Once again, hit X, select the right tool. Again, if you, if you find it easier to just paint, you're more than welcome to just go ahead and paint it. Sometimes that can add, cause some issues. Sometimes it's a perfect solution. So if you feel like this is a little faster, then you know, you're know you welcome to just go ahead and paint, which might be a good option. And then you can always use the other options like removing it, removing the faces. So now I'm gonna hit X, bring the black back and paint away the areas that I don't need. All right details both of these have a white edge so i can kind of paint it in here to see where it's located which is right there and i think the other one also has it so i'll make a paint there so if you don't know where they're located there you go and now you can make a big swoop Flip. and i'm going to do one down here too i want to check the seams make sure their transition's good Then here is not so hot. It's a nice thing you can paint on the model, which is great. Okay, do the same to the other one. Hit X, make a nice little swoop. 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 Hit X to remove the excess. Again, you can use lazy mouse if you want to, if you find it easier. So I'm gonna turn it on. There you go. A little more at the bottom. And then this one. All right, turn off Lazy Mouse, and then you can fix the details. Make sure the seams are good. All right, it's looking really good. I'm going to start detailing this one. Let me do the armband next. We're going to hold down Shift and down, Shift and down. Shift, down, shift, down, shift, down. Going to fill this in. Using a tablet is really helpful. And then we we'll hit X and I, there's a circle and right smack in the center. So I'm just going to make the circle bigger and remove, 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 and remove. I'm going to remove all this. And then go back to this one and make sure that all of them are painted in. So again, grab the mask and make sure you're using the right one. And then you can use the other mask to make sure that the edges are painted in. These edges need to be a little sharper. So I think I'm going to go back to my mask. I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to click once, hold down shift. Oop, that's too big. Too much. Hold down shift, click once, hold down shift. They kind of do touch though. And right here, up here, well, too much. Got to be very careful with this. I cut too much. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, let's talk about stitching. Let's go to the body. I'm going to create a fill layer. And I do want this to be a dark color so I can color pick the blue. Something like that and make it a little darker just so it's more noticeable. I do need a height, so I'm going to increase my height. And I definitely don't need metal normal opacity or missiveness, but I would like the roughness to be a little bit more rough. So I'm going to right click and create a black mask. 
And then over here to the right, if I close this and I just type in stitch, you'll see that we have a variety of paintbrushes. So I can grab this one, for example. You can see that I can make some really cool looking stitching. So it's up to you how, you know, the size and the shape and everything. So you can decrease the size so that it's a smaller stitching. You can increase the size. So it's obviously more noticeable. That one's a little too much. I think that's a good size. And you can increase or decrease the spacing. So the more spacing, the less stitches it has and vice versa. So I think that's a good place. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure symmetry is active. And, and according to the reference, I start here and then go down. So that's how you can get some stitching. Might be sticking out a little too much, but I'll uh, work on that. I'm gonna probably add stitching along here too, cause there is a seam. So I prefer trying to hide the seam a little bit using stitching. I'm gonna turn on lazy mouse just so I can maybe get a little bit more control. Increase it a little bit. Go along here, along here, and along here. I don't see anything on the back. There's no designs on the back. So if I wanted to, I could do the same thing. Maybe I can add it to the back. It's cool. It's a small thing, but it actually adds a lot of elements to the character. I might as well can keep going and add them to the pants. Whoop. And she probably has some inner ones, so I might as well add them as well. All right, let's turn off symmetry. Now she does have fur in here. I'm gonna do X-Gen fur. I do wanna add some sort of texture there. So I'm gonna add a new fill. I'm gonna click on the base color, type in fur, and maybe use one of these as a base. I can increase the contrast if I want to. I can work on the balance if I want to. Then I'm gonna increase the roughness. And I actually don't need a lot of these. Emission, normal, metal, all that stuff. I don't really, even height, I don't need. So that's kind of gives me a base. If you want to give it more texture, like I need more of it, I'm gonna go ahead and increase my tiling. And I think that's good enough. And the only issue is that I put in the wrong layer. So let me control X, go to accessories, select top layer, control V, add a black mask. And then not using that brush, let's clear out the brush, grab a nice hard brush, turn off spacing if you want to, or lazy mouse, and then you can just kind of um, bring it in. And you can see that the texture is still there for this. Just turn that off. There we go. Turn this all to way to white. So turn on symmetry. And all the way along. Definitely need to make it lighter. And she also has some here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this section. Messed up a little bit. Let's deselect the ones that we don't need. Hopefully I didn't add texture to something else. Remove some of these, add them back. Probably turn off symmetry. I'm gonna add another layer. I'm actually going to copy this mask, create a black mask, and then I'm going to paste it. And then there are a bunch of no modes that we can use to, um, you know, we can use multiply, divide, and just try to make it a little bit brighter. Now this one has, um, going back to the color, it does have all of these things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove them. I just really want is the color and we just kinda try them out and see which one works. I'm trying to lighten the fur basically. So that might be nice if I can just reduce the opacity. Oh, that was supposed to be normal. And then I can reduce the opacity. So that kind of gives you a little bit of that texture for the fur. Again, I'm planning to add regular fur to it, but you know, that could get me started. All right, I think that is a good place to stop in the next video tutorial. We are gonna start working on her skin to make it look more like Cora because she's a little lighter than she actually is.
And with the skin, we're going to start adding the details of the eyelashes, the blush, or the lip color and eyeliner and all of that. And then afterwards, I'm going to export the texture and bring it into Maya for a render. Then comes XGen. All right, guys, hopefully you learned a thing or two. If you did, please like and subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like this and that you want to see more. Please share this video. If you, if you feel that there's an artist out there that would uh, like to learn more about Substance Painter and create similar work, please share my videos. That would be amazing. Don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free 3D models, eBooks, resources, and so much more. And while you're there, why don't you check out my e-courses? I do have some e-courses where you can you can get a deep dive of Maya and modeling, texturing, and so much more. So again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you in the next video tutorial when we go over skin.